Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Thompson, Executive Advisor here with Power. This is the beginning of our Solar Mastery Training course, and it will evolve in the coming weeks. And the first in this series is how electricity is generated and transmitted. And you might find this a little staggering once you begin to see how we're powering our grid today. And if you look at this graphic with trucks and, and excavation equipment, this is what we do in many cases coal, more than 30% of the energy that we generate today is dug up in the ground. It's put in trucks, as you can see here, somewhat inefficient process. It's then dumped into a bunker and the bunker puts it into what's known as a pulverizing mill. So smashes it up into powder, puts it in through a filter. And of course, all of this during the time is creating some smoke and pollution that takes place. Eventually it's sent on through the feed tanks and all this, <laughs> this process that has to take place. And what ends up happening is it gets burned. And as it's burning, it's creating this steam process, of course, putting more pollutants out into the environment through the stack. And the process is to generate electricity through the steam turbine in this case, and then it powers the grid. Well, if you look a little bit further in that process, we want to talk about what happens when it leaves that facility. I have to stop screen share here for a moment and take you to a video that I'd like to share with you. And I'm going to put this back on screen share. And here we go. Let's share this video. There we are. <laughs> i.e. questions, your energy questions, answered. The amount of energy that is wasted in the production of electricity. This is Jim Barlow. He's an architect from Wyoming. I've asked this question to other people and nobody's had an answer. Well, Jim, let's find out. As electricity goes from a power plant to the plug in your home, how much is lost? Let's break it out, step by step. Consider this lump of coal. Stick it in a power plant, and only a third of its energy makes it onto the grid as electricity. That's physics for you. Next, the electricity travels on big, long-distance, high-voltage power lines, sometimes hundreds of miles across the country. We call this transmission. As electricity flows through wires, it heats them up, and we lose 2% of the energy just warming the air. Then, distribution, where electricity flows through your neighborhood on smaller, lower-voltage power lines. Transformers, those are the cans on power poles, step it down to a voltage that's safe for your home. In that last mile or so, we lose about 4% of the energy in our electricity. So by the time it reaches your house, 5 or 6% of electricity has literally blown away as heat. But in rural states where people are spread out, like Wyoming, we lose way less. Here's why. Those high-voltage cross-country transmission lines lose less energy than the low-voltage neighborhood distribution lines. Think of it as the bigger the power line, the smaller the losses. Another cool thing, you can actually see losses. Notice how power lines sag in the middle? Some is grounded, but the rest? Heat, like the kind lost from electricity, makes metal power lines expand. And when they do, they sag. Power lines are saggier on hot days, and they leak more energy. After that, electricity enters your house. It travels on wiring inside your walls to its final destination, your plug. Utility companies meticulously measure losses from the power plant to your meter. But once electricity enters your home, we stop measuring. To find out how much is lost, we'd have to put a meter on all of your appliances. So to recap, in power plants, nuclear, natural gas, coal, petroleum, we lose about 65% of the energy in raw materials when we make electricity. That adds up to 22 quadrillion BTU a year in the US. That's more than our annual gasoline consumption, lost the thermodynamics. When we move electricity from a plant to your home, we lose another 5 to 6%. That's 69 trillion BTU, or roughly the same amount of energy Americans use drying our clothes every year. And inside your home, it's a mystery. Losses fluctuate all the time. The physics of the grid tells us losses increase with temperature, current, and demand. Which means if everyone turns on their lights and AC and TVs all at the same time, losses are big. 
but even out at electric speeds, and losses are smaller. The same applies to your house, which is basically your own personal grid. You can reduce losses in your home by spreading out your electricity use instead of running all your appliances at once. So, what does Jim in Wyoming think of this? He thinks we can put this knowledge to use. How do we, you know, reduce our overall carbon footprint with this knowledge? What's your energy question? Submit it. At well, how do we reduce our carbon footprint? Let's take a look at the process that we can go through here. Now you've seen the lost in transmission, you've seen how we dig up coal, and that's just one example. And we use that because we import so much coal from other countries, and you can see the inefficiencies that already exist. Now you see what happens when it goes onto the grid and the losses that occur. Well, want to take it one step further and take a look at what, what this data has. To put this into context, 61% of the energy that throws through our economy or is completely ultimately wasted. You can look at these studies, but this just shows you how completely inefficient the energy distribution transmission process here is in the United States and, and worse, unfortunately, in other countries. So here we go. Let's recap what it looks like. And we're going to talk about the good news. So the power plant generates electricity as to step it up to be able to push it across those lines. It moves across the lines and step it down when it comes into a neighborhood. Ultimately, it makes it into the home or the business where it's consumed. And as you've seen, more than two thirds of the energy that starts never even makes it to the home. And then in addition, 60% of the energy that's sent into the grid is rejected. How's that? Compared to this, with what we currently know as a grid-tied solar system, Solar panels on top of the home, they take the photons from the sun, convert it into DC electricity, and here in the United States we use AC, alternating current, so it's taken into the panels, it's then converted into AC through an inverter, either on the panel or side mounted on the home, and then the home uses whatever energy it currently needs, and the excess energy is sent out back onto the grid. We'll cover that in the net metering section so you know what happens to the energy and the credits that are received through that. But that's the process of major improvement for a homeowner. When you talk about reducing your carbon footprint, learn more about that during the net metering. If you look at your current plant versus the personal power plant, here's what you're paying for. All the generation expenses, the drilling, the driving, the coal, whatever the process is, the supervisors, middle management, executive teams, brokers. And then of course you have other middle people who source that energy to send it out to sell that energy. I know of one individual, a friend of mine, who has made $100 million in the last 10 years simply being a middleman. Talk about waste. Well, and you have the transmission, as you've seen, significant waste that you're still paying for. Somebody's paying for that and that's, that's us. The employees to maintain the poles, the lines, everything that happens and all that wasted energy. Just think of that compared to the power plant that's on top of your roof. Make that decision to go solar and be part of the shift of energy from dirty to clean. Thanks for listening.